today I interview a Freemason. Welcome, Rudy. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yeah, please, Thank you yeah, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Please, uh, please introduce yourself. Well, uh, my name is Rudy David Negretti. Uh, I am a Freemason of Hollywood Lodge 355. And this past year was my 25th anniversary as a Freemason. I also am a Knights Templar, Signet Chapter 57, Cryptic Council 11, and LA Commandery number 9 on the York Rite, and also just newly 32nd degree of the Valley of Pasadena Scottish Rite. So I am, I would call Trinitize. I have all three bodies under my belt. 25 years. So you're 25 year uh, Freemason. Yeah. Um, you are a 32 degree Freemason. I'm not inc- super familiar with um, the degrees. I know that um, there are three degrees initially to become a Master Mason. Correct. And then beyond that, if you choose to want to go any further than that, it's up to you. What is that even? I mean, I'm sure you can't divulge a lot of it, but mm-hmm. uh, I do know that a lot of people will say, I've seen them in the comment section, they'll be like, hey, Chris. If someone's a 32 degree Freemason, they don't know because they're not a 33. When you're a 33 is when you're revealed the top secret of Freemasonry. Is, is there any validity to that, Rudy? Um, I can say factual facts. And, you know, obviously you're going to have people say no, because in this world of duality, you got to have the complete opposite. But there is no secret after the 32nd. As a 32nd degree, you know the secrets and what people tend to believe, all the fantasies, oh, that's when you are taught the we believe in the devil and blah, 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 blah. The 33rd degree is given to brothers who have put in exceptional sacrifice to the craft. Over and above the normal, they've been there, they've done all the chairs, they've done all the charities, and well-deserved. That's the, the sum of the 33rd degree. Right. These are living beings. These are not devil worshipers. Uh, you'll be sorely disappointed if you ever think that in any of the degrees of Freemasonry, you're going to find any one of the craft asking you to worship anything that resembles the devil. So all those fantasies, I'm here to tell you, um no absolutely 100 percent not and you know you people get i get sick of answering the same question right Say, oh, do, do you, you feel free to be your investigative reporter put your sure. you know pants on and go and try to discover what degree it is that we worship the devil we don't right we have to believe in a god that's one mandatory thing and you can worship that god however you however you please right and and don't say i know oh what if i want to worship satan and one of well no can't do that because the brothers aren't going to allow any form or belief in a god that opposes the unity of god so it has to be some it's something positive it sounds like yes Okay, because, you know, for myself, I don't know much about Freemasonry. I'm sure people watching this video don't know a whole lot about Freemasonry. All mm-hmm. that we know is what has been taught taught or, or promoted in, in the media, mm-hmm. right? In mainstream media, in, in films, and in lore. Yes. So I asked the viewers of this channel to submit some questions for you, Rudy. Okay. Um, regarding Freemasonry and all of the, like I said, the legend, mm-hmm. all of the wild allegations about Freemasonry. So, one thing I'm going to say, yeah, before I answer these questions, sure, yeah, is I want to let you know that I'm not speaking on behalf of the craft in general. Right. Okay. I'm not speaking on behalf of any particular lodge sure or any particular just your experience exactly my okay. personal experience as a freemason that's fair yeah and that's all i can do but i will you know try to answer the best of my knowledge any questions that any of your viewers and listeners have perfect okay so we'll start with the first one and uh this one states 
wonder if they would acknowledge the god of Freemasonry is Lucifer. That's according to top Masons such as Manly P. Hall um, and Albert Pike. That would be my question. Thanks for the content, Chris. Well, thank you for the uh, submitting that question. Yeah, I appreciate you. that. That's a great question. Because yeah, I have, I've personally have seen some some work like, like you know, and it's hard to know what is valid and what is not when things are published, and especially when texts are so old. Mm-hmm. But there's uh, uh, some speculation in, in certain uh, documents that were uh, printed by um, you know we whistleblowers, whatever you want to call them, they will say that Albert Pike and Manly P. Hall allude to the uh, the the bearer of light, Lucifer, is the actual real God. Okay, is this real? Uh, as far as a god of masonry, Lucifer is not. Like most things in Freemasonry, there's symbols and allegory and metaphors that are used to get across a certain point. Lucifer being the morning star refers to Venus. Before the dawn breaks, Venus appears. Christ Jesus was also referred to as the morning star. Okay. So the Lucifer being associated to anything negative was done, and I'm not going to claim to say I know the exact date or when. Okay. But it was a title that was not, that was taken out of context and applied by the church. Is this a Catholic church? I would say the Roman Catholic early church misinterpreted to the point where Lucifer took on a negative connotation and a negative meaning. But that, even as a, what you would call a symbol, it is not a god for masonry. God in masonry is the creator of all. And being the creator of all is all. And the way you want to worship that all, whether it be Catholicism, you know, Hinduism, Islamic faith, Jewish faith, it it doesn't matter. As long as you believe that there is a creator that created everything. Sure. So, no, that's not a, that would be a misinterpretation of the word Lucifer. So, I would have to say no. (laughs) There's no God in Freemasonry. Uh, there's, there's, the no, there's no specific God in Freemasonry. No. So th- that is a, th- there, because people keep telling me that over and over and over. And Albert Pike, he released. There's a document released where he said um, there was a, a speech that he made for Freemasons, and for whatever reason, it was leaked. Was is this a real speech that was leaked in your knowledge? Because you've been a Freemason for 25 years. So is is there any validity to that? Is that a true document um, that Freemasons? Um, acknowledge as being accurate in your opinion there is no if if you would uh, i know what you're referring to yeah yeah you're referring to an interpretation a misinterpretation okay of what pike was saying okay all right there's no nowhere that pike says that freemasons worship a god Okay. As the all God named Lucifer. And you're going to have people say, no, that's not true. No, no, no. It's okay. It's sure. Right. So have that, take that thought of us versus them. Sure. To your last day. It matters not. Okay. So I'm not trying to change. I'm not here. Hold on, I'm going to adjust this real quick. I'm not, I'm not here to try to convince anybody to sure. become a Mason. Okay. And I'm not here to prove anyone wrong. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that's how I know I'm never wrong. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> because I'm never going to tell you you're wrong. Okay. So now where, where am I ever going to be wrong? Right. That's what you want to believe. Go ahead and believe it. Where the, the breaks come is when you try to enforce what you believe onto me. I see. Do, do, do when you walk around, and right now you're wearing a polo with the Freemason um, 
mm-hmm. uh, um, symbol uh, and also compass and square, compass and square, and also the the uh, the chain. Yes. When you're walking around, I mean, right now we're in Hollywood, so people probably <laughs> don't bat an eye. But it's when, whenever you go outside of places like Hollywood, did people ever like get scared? Um, I get a mixture. Okay. I, I get a lot of looks. Okay. And then I got I get a lot of you know I can see that they want to ask me. And then I get some people who, you know, I was in the gym the other day and some kid walks up to me and he goes, hey, uh, you know, you worship the devil. (laughs) And I go, really? I didn't know that. I go, are you a Freemason? He goes, no. I go, so then how would you know what we worship? Well, that's what I heard. So you feel then in all of the logic going on in your head that something smart like you know, you worship the devil. You're going to say that to me and I'm going to actually look at you seriously. I go, bro. And and I have things like that yeah. you know, where it's just utterly ridiculous where I have to just laugh. And then there's, oh my God, let me, uh, can I shake your hand? Oh, I want to wow. let you know that my grandfather was a Mason. My father was a Mason. I salute you. And yeah, many, of those, many of those occasions happen. But most of the time I wear my light. Uh, I'm a proud Freemason. And I salute all the brothers that have removed the bushel, removed the light from under the bushel, so to speak. Because I know that a lot of brothers want to keep their affiliation quiet. I prefer to be the one that I will, I I want people to know that I'm a Mason. Yeah. I have my tattoos because, well, why do you have tattoos that you're a Mason? You know, that's the, well, if something should happen to me physically. Sure. Or I can't speak for myself. Okay. I want them to know who they're dealing with. What kind of person was he by what's on my body? Right. Without saying anything. Yeah. I want them to know, they notify my brothers, I'm good in any part of the world. Right. That's that's why. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, Freemasons who are um, Freemasons who are uh, of all walks of life, but there are also people in the public eye, and, and they kind of don't want to. I know Ashton Kutcher. You know, he's been seen mm-hmm. wearing the Freemason hat. You know, mm-hmm. Tom DeLonge, the guitar player from Salute Blink-Made to 2. all my brothers. Um, uh, uh, Simon Cowell from American Idol. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, right? And, and you'll see them in their free time wearing a hat, or or maybe have the emblem on their on uh, whatever it is that they're maybe. in their car. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> or uh, for Simon Cowell on a jet ski. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, but, but they don't outwardly speak about it. I think the only guy that's modern right now that's speaking about it is, is in it just a little bit, you know, being proud is uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Absolutely. You know? So I think that maybe I, in my personal research, mm-hmm. Um, and I know you and I have talked about this before off camera, you know, uh, when we've hung out before and we've talked about the Knights Templar yes. and how that whole story unraveled, how it got misconstrued. Um, before we go into any more questions that were submitted, can we hear the story about how the Freemasons started? Who were the Knights Templar in that whole legend? Okay. And it's factual too. Yeah, so absolutely. I just want to, I just want to, because it's historically factual. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows that before we move any further than that. Okay. Right. All right. The general consensus of the history of the free ma- of the Knights Templar were, is a story of a group of knights that were in the Holy Land and they decided to come together to protect pilgrims from Europe on their road to the Holy Land. And through that... So they were literal knights. Yeah, they were little knights, human yeah. beings. They had their headquarters at the Temple Mount. And these nine knights formed an organization which grew to be one of the most powerful organizations in Europe, in that part of the world. Uh, they were accredited to forming the first banking system. So we owe the banking system that we have today to them where pilgrims could deposit their material wealth at one priory and then have a receipt and then cash that receipt in somewhere else down the line and have their goods and and wealth transferred there. 
then their wealth and power grew and their influence grew, their political influence grew, and the king of France and the pope, Clement, basically convicted the Knights Templar of heresy, worshiping the devil, all in a power grab. But but they did, this, so in my personal research, they did this because um, in, in what I've read is that the Pope and uh, King Solomon, is that the guy? King, King so Philip. King Philip, okay, um, my bad. Mm -hmm. They were indebted to the bank. Exactly. And so they had no way out, and the only way out they found is framing these guys, yes, the Knights Templars. Yes, to seize their wealth. And saying that they're bad guys. Yes. And they were saying all kinds of stuff. Like, I, I've read that they were saying that they were um, Antichrist and that they had yep. Baphomet in their temple, and they were pissed, they were literally pissing and urinating on crosses yeah, for rituals yep. and things of that nature. And so that's where kind of the lore started with Freemasonry. Like Freemasons are evil. And so correct. It, it, and so I'm wondering now, um, based on my personal research, how accurate is that the, Templar narrative? Yeah. Okay. Cause is that's this, the one that's primarily promoted throughout the public right now because i'm trying to look at this from an objective standpoint and not be biased okay i'm not going to say freemasons are bad and i'm not going to say they're good we're going to learn today what freemasonry really is well let me give you a little another side of the knight's templar narrative okay it is now being exposed by the grand commander of the knight's templar timothy hogan the narrative that is basically just come into light is the narrative that the Knights Templar were not in the Holy Land to protect pilgrims. They were there to excavate under the Temple Mount. I've heard this. Secrets that were underneath. Like that artifacts. Were left there yeah. by a civilization that was pre-flood. Wow. And that this civilization left certain wisdom in certain parts of the world after that flood. And the Templars knew that. And so when they found what was under the temple, they had to get it out of there. And they came to the New World. They came to the Americas. And that wisdom... I can only give you a brief context on what it is. You're talking about technologies, you know, sacred geometry, how this earth really works, the stars, the, the sacred geometry of the human soul, the, the ages and the epics that come and go, wisdom that comes not from this planet. I'm not saying that it's an outer dimension like somewhere out there in physical space. Okay. It could be in another dimension. All these things were left and the Knights Templars had and were going throughout the world to recover it. Wow. And have recovered it. And so now so a lot of it, it is coming to light. But these are things that can't be spoke of. What, why not? It, because the human species has to get to a certain level of understanding before this type of revelation comes to light. And right now, when you go back to the ancient texts, you see that we're moving from the Pisian Age into the Aquarian Age. Right. Sure. Okay, they don't have to be Freemasons to know these ancient cycles are happening. Right, okay. Freemasonry teaches us about those cycles, but that's just one way. Freemasonry is not the only, you know, yeah. path. It, it keep this one a little, uh, there you go, right, right in the front, yeah. It can't, it's not the only path right. to this knowledge. Sure. But you see in the American story, you can see the prevalence of the Freemason influence because we built this country. And, and that's what's interesting is that um, 
I would say most all of the founding fathers were um, Freemasons, right? Correct. And 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 I've I've heard people um, they kind of want to brush that that yeah. thought away. Yeah, they want to brush the fact that this is what's really hilarious. But then, but then before you say that, but then people will say um, things like, <laughs> things like this, and I just want I want to get your uh, your thought process on all of this. But um, people will say, okay, Freemasonry may have started as something good in the early uh, inception of the um, writing of the Constitution and the uh, the birth of the United States back in 1776 when they wrote that Constitution. And these guys were Freemasons, and they wanted to live free, and they wanted you know um, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, everything they wrote in the Constitution, right? Mm -hmm. And then eventually, with time, it, that became eroded, um, and then it turned into something nefarious and evil. Is there any truth to that? Be be and before you say anything else with, with that too, has it ever been infiltrated? Because I've read parts where in Italy, uh, Freemasons were infiltrated by the mob. Because they knew that there's a certain amount of secrecy that has to be kept. I know what lodge you're referring to. Yeah, and so in that lodge in Italy, mm -hmm. they got infiltrated by these mobsters who knew that, and they they took advantage of that secret that secrecy, mm -hmm. so they can get away with awful crimes. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Okay, regarding the possibility of Freemasonry being infiltrated by corrupt individuals having influence in a particular lodge or a particular movement. We are in an imperfect world. Okay. Okay. There has to be an opposite. So if you have anything in existence, okay, you're going to have an element of that that has a negative you know, motive. Right. And Freemasonry being an organization in a world of imperfect symmetry. Sure. In a world where the human body through its entire existence on earth sees half a picture. Sure. You're in a body that don't know what its own ass looks like. You're in your entire existence seeing half a shit. Yet individuals walk around like they know. When one can humble itself to realize there's got to be something else, then they can start to walk to the path that will lead to an understanding of the world we're sitting in right now. And when you understand that nothing can exist without that negative peace in existence also, you can see the dance of negative and positive that at the end of the day brings light. And be, so Freemasonry, like every other exor, has been infiltrated and corrupted. Okay. But that's so, not the teaching. Right. So that's not the fundamentals is what you're no, saying. No, that, that is not the Not core. at all. But but, the, but but these bad you know Italian mobsters did it at one point mm -hmm. and um, for influence at the end of the day it goes yeah. back to who have you made your allegiance to mm -hmm. have you made your allegiance to the gods of materialism sure the amen quote side of religion right where one is right and the other's wrong they all worship materialism the flesh the fear of dying in the flesh you have those though that counterbalance that the ones that believe in unity so while you have an organization that represents purity in okay. its true form which is freemasonry is freemasonry okay. is just an expression of a tradition it permeates all of the civilizations throughout okay. time. Just one branch of the same teaching. Does it really go back all the way to Egypt? Like Egypt? Absolutely. Like, like goes ancient back. Egypt? It goes back to ancient Egypt. It goes back to the 18th dynasty Egypt with Pharaoh Akhenaten and the children of the sun. Yeah. Nefertiti and Tutankhamun. Yeah. We know them as Tutankhamun. Yeah. 
the follower of Amen. Yeah, and, and just to just to let you guys know too, uh, we will get to all the questions at the end of this interview. I just really want to get um, down to the nitty gritty of the fundamentals of yeah. Freemasonry. So you know, in case if anyone's wondering, we're gonna get to all those questions at the end. Yeah. Um, also sure. too. You know, right now, you know, we're in vibing. We're we're having mm-hmm. a couple of beers, and you're smoking some weed. I'm mm-hmm. smoking a cigar. Absolutely. I, is that frowned upon in Freemasonry? Can you smoke uh, weed and drink okay. a beer? Can I smoke a cigar? Can, I mean, is this frowned upon in Freemasonry? This this is where we go to the human side of the craft. Everybody is free to think whatever they want. Okay. For. A generation of Freemasons where we had no positive effect in their life, I could see that it could be frowned upon. Sure. Okay. Uh, it's just now legal in some states. Right. But more importantly, but to me, I have a personal love affair with cannabis because of what it did for me physically when I was shot at 21 years old and went through uh, an experience where... You were shot with a firearm. Shot twice, point blank range with a thirty eight. Jeez, a thirty eight. And I flatlined twice, yeah. Jesus, a thirty eight. To make a long story short, three major surgeries. How many uh, uh, bullets? Two thirty eight slugs through my chest, traversed my body through my left shoulder all the way, didn't exit, stayed, went through both lungs, grazed my aorta. The second bullet went into my back, hit my spine, lodged up near my spleen. Uh, I was in three major surgeries, 22 hours plus each one. On the third one, uh, the, the mission was to, we're going to remove your stomach. Oh, my The God. part of your esophagus is blown to shit and it's not repairable. We're going to remove your stomach, remove that damaged part of your esophagus, and reattach your stomach higher into your body. But there is a 98% chance you're not going to make it, so you need to sign this document. So I signed it, and um, that's when I experienced what eventually led to Freemasonry. Which is? My near-death experiences, I was flatlined twice, once in post-op, I mean, once on the table uh, for two minutes and 32 seconds, and once in post-op, the same surgery for a minute and 33 seconds. Jesus, man. And they brought me back with the paddles both times. And, you know, I was kind of disappointed when the nurse, when I finally came out of my coma, they told me that I had flatlined and I had coded. And I was kind of disappointed because I didn't remember seeing anything right i didn't see the light i didn't see my people have all kinds of stories yeah i didn't i didn't i was kind of like well i feel shortchanged yeah (laughs) you know you didn't see jesus yeah so but that actually i did see something okay what did you see Uh, did you recall this right after no that's what that's what's crazy about it i didn't recall what i saw immediately after i didn't Actually, started hap- things started happening to me physically about mm, three and a half years later, four years after I got out of the hospital. I was in ICU for three and a half months. Wow. And uh, There must have been one hefty medical bill. It, it was over a million dollars. No. Yes. Are you being serious? I am totally serious. Dude, the medical system it was stupid. fucked, man. It was retarded. Uh, I was at Holy Cross Hospital in Granada Hills. And it was, Jesus. It was, it was crazy. Uh, they, they removed my stomach. They relocated in, in in the middle of my body. Wow! Higher up in my chest, uh, I went from 165 pounds. Played football all my life, you know. Pop Warner, high school. I was an athlete, and then I got reduced to 87 pounds. Wow! I couldn't walk. I looked like an Auschwitz victim. Yeah, it was just like my head and my bones. So I had to learn how to swallow. Uh, for three and a half, for three months, I wasn't even allowed to swallow. I just sit there with my suction and suck the ice, and then suck it out. Wow! With a filling up the bucket that's on the wall, right? They had to come in and they get pissed off at me. Yeah. But um, I had to learn how to swallow again. Uh, I know what any soldier that's been in combat. I know what 
they felt like. I know what bullets feel like. I know the horror. Does it burn? Uh, it's, it, well, when they first hit you, you don't feel it. Oh, really? Yeah. Like you just didn't you feel know, it? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know something's wrong oh. because I don't know if you've ever had like a large, like a, felt a concussion, like a, a M80 or a, a firecracker this close where you feel it. And, I'm not, you, no, of course not. I mean, I've lived in Orange County and El the bullets you know, going, life. The, the bullets go, the bullets going so fast. You just, and you know something's wrong. Did it go through you or no? It went. One went in me, and the second one went in me, in me as I was falling. But I, Jeez. I what did I, you feel like physically? I, I hit the ground. C- could could and you then, move? Uh, I could. I could. tried to move. I was screaming, "God, help me, help me!" And I, and my bot, my. I was laid flat out, and my arms kind of like were swirling on their own, doing their own shit. Jeez, and man! Blood was coming out of my eyes. It was I Ugh. couldn't see. It was running out of my nose and my mouth. I could just see the blood pooling up where I was laying. And I, I said, God, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And I swear to God, I it's one of those things that I can't prove, but this is what happened. It, I really felt something pick me up by my neck. Yeah, pull me up. And literally dragged me through the showroom. I worked at a waterbed store. Yeah. I came out of the office, through the front doors, pulled me in the middle of the street, and just dropped me. And I, right when I fell, I see these big headlights, and I see that it's a, um, an armored car. Was it nighttime or daytime? Daytime. Daytime. Like 9.45 in the morning. Wow. And uh, I looked up and I could see the guy stand up in the car on the car seat, and I could see him grabbing for the uh, for his his uh, radio. Sure. And he was immediately calling the the ambulance. And then I I just kind of like oh, I don't, I don't want to die. I was just talking to myself. Sure. And yeah, then yeah. the next thing I know, I see two females come up next to me, and there's these two off duty nurses that just happen to be walking out wow. of the restaurant. Yeah. And then they're ripping off my clothes to get entry wound, exit wounds. Yeah. And then I feel a, another person come on this side, and I look and I see it's a guy. I can't talk. I'm bleeding. I can't breathe. And I see it's a guy, and he it happened to be an off-duty cop right. from Chicago. Wow. So they both they all converge on me, and they rip all my clothes off to minimize the bleeding. And then the ambulance just happened to be right around the corner. So wow. they came to me. But here's the thing. At the hospital that they brought me to, you got a, like a one in a hundred thousand chance right. that at that moment that there would be a thoracic specialist in the ER. I don't know what that means. Now, when any surgery has to be when any when any surgery has to be done, a specialist has to be brought in. Sure. Okay. Now at Holy Cross Hospital, they had a situation where yeah, you have a general doctor at the emergency. Then you have rotations of different doctors that go in there that are the emergency. Right. But all of them are on call. Okay. But my wounds were so serious. Sure. And that day, there just happened to be a Dr. Wittig that happened to be a thoracic specialist in the ER that morning. Was there just for a meeting. Wow. He was there for you, man. Yeah. It's, 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 wow. It's crazy. And so when I got there and they rushed me in and he's got there and he's evaluating me, I can't breathe and they're doing stomach punches and they're trying to put a trach and all this shit. And then I see this big, tall white guy, the priest. He starts giving me the last rites. Jeez, man. Right there. And then I don't know how long it went. Then my brother and my mother come in and my brother sees me. I'm already blown up. I don't know if people know that when you have such, that kind of trauma, you inflate. You don't look the same. You're like unrecognizable. You get real bloated. Yeah, you get bloated. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. And my brother saw me and he's smacking the wall and I, and, the, and all I'm hearing is the last rites going on and I don't care now if I die. I really don't. Right. The pain was so bad. All I wanted to do was yell and get back to surgery, get back to surgery. Yeah. What did, any, what did it feel like to, to, to feel like you're dying? Because I remember one time I had a dream that I died and I, I got shot in my dream. Mm-hmm. I got shot in my dream, and I remember I. In that my, makes sense. In my dream, I fell asleep, mm-hmm. 
and and I looked at the pillow. I woke up mm-hmm. in my dream. Like I, I I went to go to I went to sleep. Woke up not in real life, but in my dream. I woke right. up and there was blood all over my pillow. Mm-hmm. So then I, I I got up off my bed and I felt kind of weird and woozy, and my mom and my sister were in a hall of like my house, mm-hmm. which they didn't live there at the time. So I was like, why? You know, like, I was like, please help me. Like I was like, I got shot. Like and I'm bleeding on my head, and um and then they said okay, and then they walked to the corner of the hall and went out that way. And I, when I went over there, they were gone, and so then I tried to get to the door to exit my house, and I felt very weak, like I couldn't move my legs. Mm-hmm. So I collapsed on the floor, and then when I was on the floor, I felt like struggling with sleep. Like it felt just like my eyes were so heavy, and I wanted to close them, but I was scared to close them. <laughs> and, then, and then when I finally like let go, su- let go and submitted, yeah. I closed my eyes, and then I woke, woke up, up from my dream. I was like, "Oh my fucking god!" I, I was like, it tripped me out like for like a week. Yeah, you know? like that was like it felt like a near death experience in my dream, but it, it obviously was just a dream. No, it, it, but See, it, felt like it was real. You know dog. It felt like it was what, real you know life. What, you know what's funny is I I know there's no way I can prove this until yeah. it happens. Yeah. Okay. But that's exactly what it feels like. Really? When you die. Wow. Because you're never, never not going to be. Yeah. You understand? Your light will never, ever be extinguished. You will never know. There'll never be a part. There'll never be a time, an experience where you don't know you're alive. You know yourself right now as Chris. Yeah. Okay. When you take your last breath, as Chris, you're gonna remember you're not Chris. You're the guy experiencing itself as Chris. Yeah. You're gonna know, oh shit, I'm every single fucking person that ever I looked or knew upon. You're every, you're Pythagoras, bro. You're every single person that exists because there's only one. You will never not be. Right. If that was a fact, then God isn't all because there's something dead that's not God. So God is either life or it's death. Now, I can prove to you that it isn't death because I'm living. Right. And and people will say, people who are religious, they'll say God is lives in you, lives in me, lives in matter, lives everywhere, right? Correct. But so, then they forget that when I say, okay, so who is that Hindu? Right. Now that's when they go, well, it's not Jesus. Wait a minute. Is Jesus? Let me ask you, Chris. Yeah. Straight up. The God of Christianity. Jesus. Right. Yahweh, they call him. They would profess that he's all. He's everything. They would profess that he's all knowing, all loving, all powerful, eternal. Right. Then who is the God of the Muslims? Me personally, it's the same it's, one okay. because a lot of people like I, I used to be on a podcast with uh, Richie the Barber, right. the clown guy, and he was in his infancy of Christianity. So I would ask Trying him to all prove these a point. Yeah, so I would, I would always ask him silly questions like, "Hey, man, so like, what if this person's like a like a righteous individual, but they just didn't know about Christ because like, they were raised a Muslim? Are they going to go to hell?" And he's like, "Yeah, they're going to go to hell, bro." And I'm like, how does that even make any sense? You'd have to be really stupid and low IQ to believe that. Like, if you believe that if you're a righteous human being, but you were born a Muslim or born a Buddhist and you lived a righteous, good life, that you're going to go to hell because you didn't, you know, transfer to Christianity, then you have to be like an idiot. Yeah. You have to be real stupid to okay. believe that. Here, here, here's what's going on in a mind like that. In their mind, they see the world as themselves. And then something separate uh, from themselves. That makes sense. Okay. So there's no unification in their thought process. So if they have a belief in something yeah. and that person doesn't believe the same way, right? they think they're separate from them. Yeah. They profess their belief that God is separate from something, something that doesn't believe it. Like you believe it. Right. So now God is 
hell. And God that they believe in is not only hell, is a God that's going to punish somebody for not believing the way they think. Right. And then you get frustrated because you don't believe that because it sounds stupid. Sure. Because it is. Because yeah. you're making that, you're, you're founding your belief system on separation. Right. So when I you, hate that. Yeah, I when you that. believe in separation of any sort, when you can't realize that there's a place for the things that attack me in my life, I need that negativity. My whole goal in living this life is to remember that that bad guy is also me. Like Christ on the cross, looking at everybody that was punished. He took on the sins of the world. That teaching rings true for Freemasonry. He taught unity, the acceptance, the forgiveness. These are all metaphors used for the same thing, is remembering who you are, knowledge of self. Once we get to knowledge of self, then we can make our decisions in the light. Now, somebody out there who doesn't believe like me, I'm not looking at them as somebody that's not me. I'm seeing brotherhood. When a Mason, it's like this. You might think you know who you are. Sure. But I know who you are. Who am I? You're me. Because there's only one. All it takes is one to remember. And there was a man that lived 2,000 plus years ago who remembered I'm him, you're him. Every Christian says that they go to church and they take Eucharist and they eat the body of Christ. Well, then how can you not be him? You're putting the blood and the flesh in your flesh. You're one. God taught his son that there's only one. And that one demonstrated on the planet 2,000 plus years ago and had to have the negative, what we call Judas, again, professing the need to remember you don't exist as half. That negativity, that one negative act where everybody has it wrong, where they think Judas betrayed Jesus, but no, that's a misinterpretation. It broke Judas's heart. But Judas was the apostle that Christ most admired, the wisest of them. And he knew without him doing that, there would be no light that we could see today. Ah, uh, that, that makes sense. That's total fact. I'd never thought of it. That fact. Way. It's contrast. You need yes. the darkness for the light. Yes. That makes sense. I, I get that. I get it. And so people think that you can walk through thinking you're right and then somebody else is wrong and stumble in the dark until you stumble and hurt yourself enough where you seek more than the outer religions. And then you go inside and you realize the secret isn't outside, it's inside. I found that secret on the table. I became a Mason not by somebody in my family knowing anything about that, not by some friend. I found it on the table, on that precipice of death so i'm that one I, I i challenge any freemason out there to contact me and tell me about their near-death experience that brought them to freemasonry i i i'm seeking that one i know that there's a ton of freemasons when you talk of the percentages, sure. That know the mysteries of Egypt and the soul and the sacred geometry. I'm trying to find that one that can confirm. And I know there's, like I said, they're out there, but I belong to Hollywood Lodge 355 for a reason. The life experience that I've lived since my shooting was and is the direct 
connection to my Freemasonry. Nothing outside, no man, no, you know, hey, did, did, did you uh, have a relative that was a Freemason? And I'm telling you, my journey in Freemasonry was not, oh, I want to be a Freemason. It was, hey, these guys are the devil. <laughs> Just like everybody is saying. Right. Yeah. I, if I fell right there, oh, yeah, these guys, how the hell am I going to be in existence? I don't know about these guys. And they run the world. They control the weather and blah, 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 blah. I read books and I started reading two, three books at a time. I got to know my enemy. I got to prepare and all the shit you see online now. Right. Only to come because I read, I wanted to know my enemy. <laughs> right. So that one book clicked. Oh, shit. I'm a Freemason. And so, and what was that book? <sighs> you know, it, as time went on since the first time I saw the book, uh, it's manifested in crazy places. But the book is called The Alchemist. I have that book. Yeah, it, it, you know, <laughs> it's like everybody has that book now. Yeah. When I found that book and read that book, it was uh, over, it was 80, 88, 1988. Yeah. I read that book. And then from that book, I I probably had a standing library passed to a place called the Psychic Eye Bookstores. It's a bookstore chain called Psychic Eye in the San Fernando Valley. They had two, two of them. And I would go in there and I would just start reading. And I went to the page, the section where they had, you know, books on Freemasons and Knights Templars. and Because what I saw on the other side, the book Alchemist led to another book, led to another book, led to another book, which then I started seeing what it was I saw on the other side. Yeah, because earlier you said that initially you felt a little jib because you didn't see anything. Yes. And these visions, or like people always say, like, I saw this, or I saw that. But I started you said, having dreams. You started having these weird visions while you were awake and asleep. Yeah. I remember you were telling me about this like a few week, a few yeah. months ago. Yeah, well, like one thing I, I happened, it would distinctly happen many times. I would be watching TV in the den, just the TV light on, and all of a sudden, the room would start to turn into another color. Oh, wow. And it would come on, it would come on um, gradually. So all of a sudden, you, the, the whole room was bathed in like a blue light, but there was no actual source of where this light was come from. It was just like a blue fog. And then I would think that, oh, I'm just sleeping. And then it turned into, now I'm getting worried because it was happening over and over. Sometimes it happened in my car. So then I thought I was suffering from post-traumatic stress. Sure. So then I started going to counseling. And then I started having really, really lucid dreams. And dreams that were in landscapes that didn't exist. And in landscapes, and in a view, that this is what really tripped me out. The view that I had, I can only remember it. I can't describe it, but I can give you a close point of reference to kind of picture and imagine what I'm talking about. If you were a ball... And on that ball, you had eyeballs covering every part of that surface. Let's say a million of million eyeballs covering you. And you had the ability to open all those eyes at the same time. That's the view that I had of a realm that I can't put into words. I, I was seeing flaming geometries. While you're awake. Yes. In this catatonic state that I would fall myself, find myself into. I mean, I would wake up on the floor. My mom and dad would go, what is going on? I'm here popping popcorn in my pajamas. And they would wake up 
and they would find me on the floor, the popcorn all over on the floor. Shit like that. And they thought it was my brain because of what happened. Well, in a series of these experiences, I was seeing these symbols, but not with a G saying, oh, there's a free mate. It was like covered, cloaked in flame and color. But the geometry and the shapes and the dimensions, and then I started seeing it in writing. And then it happened. I found that book, The Alchemist. And a week later, I picked up my friend, uh, Michael Mixon Moore, rest in peace. Uh, OG LA radio DJ from back in the day. Muslim, devout Muslim. He had me come to pick him up at work at the studio, 92.3 The Beat. And uh, he jumps in the car and he goes, God damn it, man. I got to quit this shit, Rudy. I go, what are you talking about, bro? He goes, the devil runs the studio, bro. Like, what? What are you talking about, bro? Like an actual devil. Yeah, you know, like the, the devils run the studio. Like the Illuminati? Yeah. Back then, oh. he was referring to that type of force. Right. right. Okay. He goes, you know, dude, Freemasons. And I go, what the fuck are you talking about? Freemasons. The Masons, dude. He goes, what I go, literally. Uh, the ma- the Masons like in bricklayers? He goes, yeah, nah, nah, bro. He goes, you don't know the Freemasons? He goes, bro, you have an encyclopedia at home? I go, yeah. He goes, didn't you graduate? I go, yeah, I went to Cal State Northridge. I go, what's up? He goes, you don't know who the Freemasons are, bro? He goes, oh, dude, the presidents, oh, they're all, dude, they control the weather. You haven't seen their building on Wilshire? I go, no, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, brother. Yeah. I don't know. I swear to God. Yeah, you didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Now remind mind you now, this is where it really clicked and I go, oh shit. I go home and I pull out the encyclopedia and it says Freemason and it says blah, blah, the oldest and most ancient fraternity on the planet. Origins unknown, blah, 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 all the presidents, a lot of presidents. And there's even Freemason symbology in in in, in money. Absolutely. And people use all this stuff every day. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Right under, right under their noses, right? The influence. So I get back, and as soon as I saw that in the encyclopedia, I just went on a mad rampage. I went to Psychic Eye. I lived in that section, and I was reading and reading and reading and reading, and I don't know what book it actually was. I can't remember. I said, oh, shit, that's what I saw. Oh, the symbols that you yeah. saw in your in your in your yes. in the, those in lucid that, dreams. No, in the lucid dreams, and now I realize is what I was what I saw in my flatline. Uh uh-uh. I was recalling what I experienced in my flatline experience that right. I couldn't bring into my reality sure. until I was in that right space. And then I said, oh, my God, I'm a Mason. And all that was is I'm God's son. You are free, my son. And all of a sudden, I go, oh, my God. And then it was like, okay, how do I get to the lodge? Do you um at that point or or uh or now uh, you, are you uh, what religion are you, Rudy? If you don't mind me asking. I am Christian. Okay. I am a member of the York Rite, which in the symbolism of the Crusades and the Christian Knights that fought in the Holy Land. Okay. My identity is the tradition of the ancients that was passed down. Through and I know I lived a life as a knight. I have the experience of warfare that brought me here. In a, in a, in a pa- like in some sort of past it, life. In a, in a past life. It, what is what is your background? Like your ethnicity. I am Mexican American and Filipino. My dad is okay. Mexican American. Yeah, he has blood from Spain and and Mexico. Sure, and the last name Negrete. Yeah, and then we have my mom, whose last name is Ignacio, who came from the Philippines. Okay, who my dad met when he was in the Air Force. 
in uh, in his term of service. You guys are military. Air Base. Yes. Military family then. Yeah. Clark Air Base and Langley Air Force Base. My brothers. Those are the two Air Force Bases that we, that played a role in my life. Right. So, but now y- you, you look at the path that I've been on, the books that brought me here to Freemasonry, it, it started making sense. The things that I wrote, that I started re- getting revealed to me and understanding was there was a reason why I got shot. All of a sudden, I started saying, oh, my God. That's the passion of Christ. That is the mortal dying and being resurrected in a new life. I experienced it. Right. Not, and it can't be erased. It's actual record. Right. It's written on the scars of my body. It's in the amount of air that I can actually breathe. Right. I have like a sense of rhythmic breathing that's been set up for me because of that. Okay. So most people have to do rhythmic breathing. Meditation has always been a part of my life since I got shot. I had three priests that would service me in my stay there. Right. I had an Irish priest. Uh, I would say just a regular American priest. Yeah. And then I had this one young priest, his name, he would come in and I would ask him as he's walking by, Father, can you come in and bless me on on writing because I couldn't talk. Oh, he I would see. look in on me and then I would write to him. Right. And he would bless me and he said, don't call me brother. He'd write, don't call me brother. I mean, don't call me father. Okay. Call me brother. Ah. Well, he would come in and he would, Give me these tapes to listen to. Now, this is back in 86. And these tapes were like meditation and healing and all these Eastern philosophies of helping the body heal. He was the only one that would tell me to call him brother. So somehow this Eastern thought weaved its way through the American and just rely on Christ and just believe that Christ is going to say to actually having an active participation in my own healing. He brought that awareness to my life for some reason. And why is that brother part so like important to you? What, What does that mean? That means that the light of the reality and the truth that we have this inner power but it had to do with Freemasonry? It had to do with Freemasonry because as I saw the teachings of Freemasonry in reading, it's all about activating that latent part of you. Okay. Which came to me, a sliver of Freemasonry came to me in the ancient teaching of meditation and active participation in your own healing. The rhythmic breathing, the mantras. He was listening to this tape. Do you think? Do you think that sometimes um, people who are religious, especially I think Christian people, and I think it is a predominant religion in the United States, but oftentimes they'll um, you know correlate anything that has to do with spiritual wellness or meditation or anything like that with something that's evil. Evil for some reason. Why is that? Do you wonder? <laughs> well, why do people? Why are people so apprehensive? If if Jesus, if you look at Jesus Christ, he was kind of a hippie. Like he was kind of a communist hippie, and so like if, if if that's what he was, and he hung around with hookers and stuff like that, like why are people so uptight when it comes to being open minded now when you're Christian? It doesn't make sense sense to me, really. Well, you're asking somebody who has pledged allegiance to half to give you an answer that would make sense. And then we go to war because you, knowing, say, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't know. And then you want to bang. Right. Right? But where we rise, ab- where we rise above that is you don't look at him as separate. He's you where you used to be. If that used to be infringes upon your freedom, then you stand up against tyranny. And there are times, just like there are times for peace, and there's times for war. 
and then the world picks a side. And those epics cleanse the bad and then move the race forward. So like the way we live today, you know, I, I hate to burst anybody's bubble. We're going to go into a much darker period in the future. And you have some knowledge of this, or are you, are you speculating? How- Many people have this knowledge. Okay. The Christians taught the time of tribulation, the revelation, okay. and I can go on to every other tradition. Sure. They say that this epic time is happening. Now. The Mayans. Yeah. Yeah, we're in the middle of it. Okay. So I don't foresee... My son or his children, my grandchildren, their life is going to be even resemble what we're living now. Right. Okay. There's going to be something drastically different. Right. Okay. But we who have knowledge of self, we don't have our allegiance to flesh. We know you can't kill us. Yes, you can kill Rudy Negretti. Sure. But you're sadly mistaken if you believe that I believe that I'm flesh. It's, it's so it, it, in your belief, do you think that once we die, mm-hmm. do you think that the um, the soul that lives inside of us, do you think that it transfers to a different body or, or a different thing? Or, or this is all, again, and this can is all, you still remember your past? This like, is all, it, this is all I can tell you okay on is my experience when you're on that other side you remember who you really are which is could be your present self or not your present self since you created it your loves your art your world that you're seeing was your thought. Right. You thought it and then you experienced it. A thought can never leave the thinker. Only a perceived separation where God thought me and now I exist where God is now separate from me. Right. Which, what is we call, we fell asleep. Never anywhere in the Bible does it say Adam woke up. And I will wait for you to point it out where it says Adam woke up. He's still asleep. You're Adam. How do we how how can we say that we're sleeping? Because it's temporal. So is it like a dream? Is You're it- dreaming. This is the matrix and what all the movies and everybody goes, Ooh, they're putting all the demonic shit in them. Dude, they're putting light in the movies. There's always been Hollywood. And that all Hollywood has been there to awaken the souls that are ready to awaken. Now you got a choice. When you awaken, you can pledge your allegiance to the forces of matter, of materialism, or what you would call wealth and fame and flesh and pussy and everybody all captivated with that. Or you can pledge your allegiance to the brotherhood of light. The brotherhood not of this world. The brotherhood that's in this world, but we're not of it. We make our allegiance to eternity, to the realm where we make worlds. We make universes. Can you think that high? Or do you still want to acquire pussy and wealth and think you're big shit? And then you get the two confused, and they've got people blaming Freemasons as demons. And all. Dude, Freemasonry is a path to your own soul. Once you get there, then you realize who everybody else is. And then you can make your decisions accordingly. But there are forces that know the same secrets that Freemasons know. But you always know them by Amen and Aten. Those two Egyptian words. We have an English word today from the word amen. Well, that was Egyptian. Yes. Amen as in amendment. 
Right. Oh. Or to change. Yeah. So oh. the Amun gods were the multiplicity gods right. of Egypt that worshipped the material wealth and the material gods of the world and pledged Amun. They murdered Akhenaten, I mean, uh, uh, Tutankhamun, and changed his name to Tutankhamun. That's not his real name. So, so then you're saying that a lot of this, the this, the, the things that are um, promulgated in the um, modern age of, of 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 Christianity and religion, it might be fraudulent. It's a, it's fraudulent, and it's a recapitulation of the same fraud that was portrayed many times over, and yeah. a fraud that, in God's great plan, allows souls to wake up. So there's the beauty of it. In all this negativity, there will be an end to it. Humanity must endure it. It's going to get a lot darker, you know, but we can all either bring more light into the world by going within or continue to look outside, pick a side, and operate from that. Somebody's wrong. Somebody's killing me. Somebody's invading Somebody's bad. Someone's not worshiping. Somebody's gay. Somebody's straight. Somebody's this. Somebody's that. There's no unity. So it's very simple, Chris, to figure out which one you want to follow. Right. Anyone who comes to you with a message of divisiveness, of separation, they're operating on the wrong frequency. I've always thought that too, because it's like you know, I always like I said, going back to, um, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of divisive religions, but. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the predominant um, one in the United States is Christianity, and like uh, there's a lot of hatred in, in it. Yeah. You know, they hate, they hate the gays. You know, they hate the blacks sometimes, or oh, or, yeah, they, uh, yeah, or they hate the Freemasons, or they hate um, anything that's a little. I even have people like on online that will who say they're Christians, yeah. and they'll look at me because I have green hair and you know I have tattoos and I dress the way that I dress. They'll say that I'm a um, you know um, uh, like on the opposing team or I'm a bad person, or you know I grew I grew up with you know uh, uh, God and Christianity in my life my whole life and then people will say like oh is he saved it's like just because i'm not to your um specific standard just like you said earlier like certain people like they live like they are like the world's living for them yeah and it's like that's the wrong way to look at it and and that's judgmental it is like if you do follow the bible and that scripture that's like the opposite of that it's it's like count it's like it's like what are you even doing Uh, well it's like okay are are you one with Christ, Christian, and they say, yes, oh, okay, yeah, okay. You believe in the passion and what he did and what how he died. You're one with that. You remember, yes, and you did it for me, okay. So when you're on the cross with him, when did he condemn anyone? He didn't do that. And they, uh, 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 well, the, the, and they go, the, so where, where do you, they'll read scripture, yeah, they'll read, read Bible scripture, okay. you know, that and, some, and, that, that the apostles, you know, wrote in their opinion. Okay. But that's not, you know, what, because if I read between the lines, like the, the men that wrote that, mm-hmm. those parts, they're men, but God, oh, philo- but, but Jesus beautiful. philosophy was all peace and love. Yes. So he didn't do like, let's hate this. Let's hate that. He did. Wasn't about that. He, he, so for people that hate anybody is really stupid okay you are representing by the questioning are representing the apostle that comes to jesus why doest thou speak to them in parable did you ever wonder the greatest man in many people's lives that ever existed was this man named jesus christ of nazareth and of all of his greatness, he only got twelve people to follow him. Yeah, if he was an influ- why? Yeah, if, if he was an influencer on Instagram, he'd be he'd be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So wait, wait a minute. You claim to follow Christ, but then you act unlike Christ, right? And then you expect people to follow you or think like you 
And then when you don't, and when they don't, now they're less than you. So here is the secret. So what do you mean by the secret? Like what is that? What is the secret? Okay. Uh, again, this is just me speaking from my experience. Sure. Um, this, if you want to cut, cut it all down, when they say, oh, what's the secret of life? Right? Why? What's the secret of life? The secret of life, the teachings, the mysteries of Egypt and beyond, and Freemasonry and the sacred geometry and the Vedas and all that, all those traditions. Yeah. It all boils down to this. You came here to learn how to die. If you could die with the right mind, you could transcend this imperfect world of duality where things are alive and things die and where there's horror and then where there's hell. Why do you think Lucifer, the devil, whatever you want to embody as negative, fell here? I don't know. We're the soul. That has fell into matter. And now through the processes of all the traditions is winding its way up the kundalini. Trying to get to the crown chakra of the mind. To be unified. And all these traditions and every lesson in life is can you figure out how to die? The, the right thought. That's the biggest fear, I think, with every human being, whether they like to admit it or not. It's our time is finite, and we're we. we I think it, well, a lot of people don't even remember that they're going to die, and that's the that's scary because if you're a human being walking around not understanding how finite your time is and how it, it, you, waste it, it. you waste it but also not only just wasting it but you don't ever come to terms with it you don't come to terms with uh love which is one of the most important things in loving yourself loving yes. your family loving god it, it's like what do you do with that that's terrifying to most people and then they'll cling on to you know these a, a lot of you know um religious philosophies and things like that and and I think that's great if if you know whoever needs that but I think that ultimately it is that it, it's death it's okay. that's what people are truly afraid of oh, the biggest motivator of people to a religion is the fear of death right that and okay. I, I agree with that yes the fear of me Rudy Negretti who is here today is one day not going to be here and be nowhere. And if that's the case, then the person that I'm looking at in the coffin when I cry, I'm really crying not for that person, but I'm crying because I see myself in that coffin. I see my days. So the whole time, if I'm lucky, I can realize that time flies and time is precious and then I don't waste it but most of the time the stimulus of today and all the things that influence us today and always have influenced man which are those trappings of materialism sure we look the other way and then if we're lucky we find it later on in life and we cling to it like that's our hope and then we leave with that little bit of hope. But so many years wasted and judgment and separation, right? But you see that this is happening on a global scale. And what's happening today is an accumulation of the entire planet's population and where we're moving into the place in space in the zodiac. You probably heard we're moving from the Pisian age into the influence of the Aquarian age. Right. Civilizations, the Mayans, the Egyptians are all all written. There's nothing, there's no, oh, you know, a man wrote that. <laughs> hold, hold on. Yeah, a man wrote that. But the physics and the mathematics prove it that what he wrote is true. Yeah. 
a right angle is a right angle is a right angle is a right angle. Right. And if it's not a right angle, it's not a right angle. And, and also, too, another thing, too, that's really interesting about modern day Christians, mm-hmm. um, in my personal opinion, is that they really love Christianity, right? And they want to live by it. But they're forgetting that the people who founded the United States were Freemasons. Correct. Right. And so if anybody was going to promulgate something nefarious, it would be that, right? They would be like, oh, Christianity, this and that. But they were Christians and they were also Freemasons. So if you're currently a modern day Christian, the people that founded the country that you love Mm -hmm. were Freemasons and they were also Christians. And so if. if, Let me get, let me, let me clarify that a little bit because this can sometimes be construed and misinterpreted. Okay. The founding of the United States was not founded on the belief of Christianity. There were Christian founding fathers. Sure. But it believed in God. Okay. So it's a deist belief. Okay. Founded on God that loved everyone. Okay. That its light emblazoned and shined upon every person on the country. Okay. Those philosophies are Greek and Egyptian. And their history has been promulgated through the ages and manifested in what we know now today as the United States of America. Okay. Under God, indivisible. So then they weren't Christian then, most of them. Most of them had Christian faith that they brought over and have been Christians all along their lineage. But the, co- the country was not founded as being a Christian country. Why did I see? Why? Well, there was they, 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 it was in the Constitution the separation of church and state, right? Exactly. Right. Okay. Now, let me ask you this: If it was founded as a Christian country, it would automatically eliminate the wisdom of Freemasonry, because Freemasonry and the wisdom and the sacred geometry goes back before Christ. It goes back to Egypt. That's why there's an Egyptian obelisk as standing as the Washington Monument. That interesting. And also a lot of Why? people, th- there's people who speculate that, there's people who speculate that Jesus Christ in his missing years, um, he went to Egypt to learn a lot of things. And then in the Bible, it says it in the scripture that you, he came back from Egypt. I shall 32. call my son out of Egypt. That's what I said, yeah. I should call my son out of Egypt. So th- people can speculate on that or, or not. I, I don't know. People... People want to pretend that from the age of 13 to 33, there's no writings on where Jesus was and what he did. And you think that the Messiah, the Son of God, that nobody has a written record of that. Right. You're wrong. And when you want to talk about some of those mysteries that the Freemasons possess in some of these secret societies— I can tell you those records and that knowledge exists. Now, you don't have to believe. It's not, like I said in the beginning, it is, I didn't, it's not here for anyone to, for me to believe and change their mind on anything. Right. Go ahead, believe it. You're not going to eliminate, you're not going to shout in the morning, sun, you're not going to rise in the morning and be successful. So your lunacy <laughs> has no impact on the truth. Okay. You say, well, truth and truth. No, truth is truth. Can't be fucked with into something else. Well, I believe that this is true. Well, if you don't believe that what I believe is true too, then you're wrong. Well, do you believe what I, what I believe is true? Yes, I do. I believe it, if that's what you believe. Like I said, you're not going to get me to find a separation. I'll, does the... Does your right hand fight with your left hand? No. Ever? N- no. I mean, I wouldn't say Because so. your body knows both parts are part of the one body. Right. But what are we doing right and left? Right now, globally, right and left, everything's separated. So if you're wise, you realize what's going on. And then you realize that where's the person dividing and separating from you is you in that altered state of delusion. Right. So there's never a heavy heart towards them. 
Well, you can't, you, you can't, you can't come to terms, in my opinion, you can't come to terms with who you are as a human being and what your role is in the world if you're constantly divided by Correct. Um, for politics. By that idiot behind, that idiot, by that's guy, yeah. yeah. Or the idiot or politics or any you know belief cra- system. You know what's crazy is people back, like maybe, when I, if I can remember correctly, maybe I was just young and I don't remember it, um, I don't, I'm not interpreting it in, in the correct way, but I remember when I was a kid, there was definitely... Um, a distrust within the within the political figures and the government and now people are buying into it oh. and they're like oh yeah i love donald trump oh i love joe biden it's like how could you love these people if first of all you've never met them it's bizarre but you know like with what you said like we're all the same right we're all humans we're all god we're all love yeah so yeah we have to love one another but it's like how can you love an ideology that you don't really even quite understand mm. so and here's the trick yeah <laughs> for the individual soul waking up the trap is what happens if that soul happens to be on the right path. The first thing that happens is ego pops oh, yeah. into the picture. That's true. Okay, so now I got some information and you don't, and I'm better than you. Now they want to get on TikTok and they want to tell people to think like them when that is exactly the thing not to do. The thing to do is to take your studies within and learn there within the secrets of the kingdom. It's not for them to know. It's for you to know the secrets of the kingdom. That's why you became a Mason, Rudy. That's why you had walked the path because it's not, they're not ready. But would you not want to share that with the world? If someone comes to you and asks you, then by all means. You understand? There's a difference. Right. There's a difference in of sharing when someone seeks you out with a real true heart. Why why are you asking me about Freemasonry, bro? Actually, that's, that's a very interesting thing. Because I remember back when I was a kid, I was a punk rocker. I had a giant mohawk and you know, I really Rebel, loved- <laughs> problem child. You're I that really guy. <laughs> I really loved being a punk rocker. I loved the music, I loved the uh culture, the philosophy, the ideologies, the culture, the subculture of it all. I thought it was really cool. Um, but I remember um realizing something very, very quickly, and it was I was very quickly trying to get all my friends into punk rock. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of them started getting into it. Mm-hmm. And then they would fall out of it like a year or two later. Like it was a fad. Yeah. And so I started realizing that if punk rock is for you, mm-hmm. you will find it. Right. You will find On it. On your own. Or it will find, in some sort of way, you will seek out that philosophy. But if it wasn't meant for you, it wasn't meant for you. No. Like you're just never meant to be a punk rocker. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of seeing a correlation here where that's probably how you feel with uh, Freemasonry. Yeah, because what you're talking about is the innate drive for brotherhood. Okay. For brothers who come under the same banner on a common cause. There can be no greater feeling for a human, a man, to have a friend. And to traverse this darkness with another. That's why as a Templar, we have the seal of two men riding on one horse. That symbolizes that, you know, brother, we might have to walk through hell, but you're going to walk it. I'm going to walk it with you. And that's what we do. And that's why it's so incredible as a Freemason to know that the brotherhood I belong to existed since time immemorial well why is it that like whenever i started telling people that i was gonna you know hang out with you guys and interview you <laughs> um they were like oh be careful because i think they're gay like gay. they'll do gay stuff in private why do uh, people think that it, well, once again when you make your when you make it this is hard for them to hear right because people, when you, when you, when you, you like pledge, you said, people, people don't like brotherhood. People yeah. don't like unity. When you right? pledge, but, but is there any v- when truth you pledge, to that? When you pledge unknowingly to yourself, when you pledge your allegiance to the world of flesh, thoughts like that pop in. Ah, okay. They don't see anything noble in brothers coming together 
to build a nation. They're just like, oh, that's gay, bro. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They it's don't gay see. to be unified. It, it, it's gay to be because they have the gay thoughts they're projecting. Ah, uh, there you go. You yeah. understand? Yeah. Because I think that that's. Dude, I had all kinds of people tell me that. They're like, secretly. It's crazy. They're secretly. I was like, I have I thought that there's, there's no way. These fantasy. Are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that there's no gay Freemasons, but it's not. It's not anything that anybody is looking at. Sure. The gay Freemason keeping kept has kept it to himself where right. it should be. Why do I want to know about if you're straight? Why do I want to know about your sex life? Right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Because yeah. why? Because I know when brothers meet, we meet in a tiled lodge. Right. And that lodge is brought into reality. What's a, what's a tiled lodge? A tiled lodge is the ritual that we do before our brothers meet and before anything is discussed under the banner of Freemasonry. So there's no energy permeating. There's nothing but purity coming in there between men and brothers. There's none of that flesh, temporality, money, any. We have to divest all metals and minerals. As a Freemason, we have to realize that we are not flesh. Or money, right? We're That's not material. Is. Our God is not the God of matter. Okay, perfect. So let, let's hit into some of the questions yes. that people have sent in. So yeah. let me let me read some of these. So yeah. it says, uh, "Bro, interviewing for Masons would be incredible." My question: yes. Do you need to profess a Christian faith in God to become a Freemason, or can it be any religion faith? I've heard conflicting answers. Keep up the good work. Uh, thank you so much for that comment. What, what would you say? C to that? Great question. It's very simple. As a Freemason, you have to have one belief. A belief. In a supreme being. You can worship that supreme being under any name. But you have to acknowledge that there is a creator. And that the world that you exist in was created by that creator. Okay. And you can become a Freemason. All right. Okay. So the next one is, uh, hey, Chris, I love your show. I watch it while I'm uh, logging, cutting down trees. Oh, that's amazing. That's really cool. Cutting down trees. Yeah, that's really cool. So here's my question for the Freemasons. I want to know what the Freemasons know about lizard people, and do they control who gets to be president? Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. let's, that. let's let's get. Uh, that's I a good question. It. No, it's a good. I that's love a great it. question I, I, I because just, I love as I, I thank I, you so much for sending that in. By as, exactly, but let let's get to some some things that I'm going to say that are speculative, and then some things that I can just leave it up to you whether to believe or not. But at any choice, any anything I say is, is only coming from me. Okay. I don't speak for the craft. Sure. And I don't speak for anybody other than me. Okay. Now, regarding Freemason and lizard people, okay, we all have been seeing, you know, see a lot of stuff on the internet that there's reptilians. Okay. There's two parts of the human brain, the mammalian and the reptilian. The reptilian... You could call it a metaphor or maybe possibly an exact being. A reptilian is one that represents the world of matter. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. But, but does that live within people? It lives within people. Okay. And when you talk about lizard people, do they exist? I would have to say, yes, they do. Wait, because so there, there are material beings that have power beyond any comprehension of what the human status quo, these, these beings do exist. So there's, li there's lizard people there. Yeah, I would call lizard people, reptilians, yes. Okay. And they walk among us, and they're here and will always be here because this is the world of matter. This is their domain. So the lizard people rule the world. So the lizard people, and I would call it a consciousness, you see what I'm saying? Okay. An energy that has been passed on through bloodlines. Okay. They run the material wealth of the world and will always run the material wealth and the existence of this planet. Are Freemasons connected with lizard people in that way? Freemasons are connected to the wisdom that is also known by the lizard people, where the true Freemason comes to enlightenment. He can take his life and pledge it to the forces of materialism. Okay, I see. Or the forces of light, which is where you got the Illuminati. Okay. The people, the bankers, 
So all the, all those things that people, the deep state, they're right. That exists. But you're not fucking with them. <laughs> because it's not your job to fuck with them. It's your job to do what Christ told you to do, to transcend this material world, this playground, this school where the Son of God fell asleep and saw somebody outside of him, somebody that was created out of his rib. So now he's not whole anymore. In a document that doesn't say he woke up, but no one, they want to skate right over it. So Adam is asleep, but now he's in a process of waking up because enough soul time on the planet collectively has happened. But before the full awakening, we're going to plunge this world into a world of darkness one more time. And it's coming. And as a Freemason, you can say, oh, the Freemasons are doing it. I can tell you this. I can tell you souls that are on the planet that know the same exact wisdom are in control of this material world, and they are doing it. So you can either try to prep, and you can try to spend the rest of your days to try to survive the turning out of the lights and shit and stockpile bullets and all that bullshit yeah. or you can do the right thing and that is go inside and remember who the fuck you are because the lights are going to turn out bitch and this world they're going to turn out and if you don't have knowledge of self the experience that you're going to experience will be a horror look at Gaza Look at what thousands of years of hatred, revenge from both sides in this day, yeah. this horror to this day. It's horrifying. And it's the same fucking problem. Separation and the lack of knowledge of self. Not knowing their self, they don't know who their brothers are. Do you realize it's the same blood right there? The same bloodlines go far enough back before you started drawing lines in the sand. <laughs> so what we have right now is an exciting time for people to wake up. But you can't wake up with judgment. You can't wake up and say, okay, now I'm awake. Now I hate this guy. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, well, now these are the devils. Oh, yeah, I know that. I'm woke. The Freemasons are the demons. What yeah. the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? It's like, you know, so I know there's people that have questions and that's why I'm so glad you came on the show because you're not going to find another Freemason, at least I don't, that's going to just tell you what's up. There's yeah. two sides, people, to the same wisdom. Two allegiances to the world of matter or to the light, to the world that Christ represents, the world not here. Which one do you belong? If you want to know and be active in the transition of this whole planet, then you can go within and you can find that knowledge of self in many traditions. Freemasonry is just one of them. Mm. But you can't be woke and not know Freemasons. You know, how many brothers, I mean African Americans, know Prince Hall? Um, I think that black people might be a little bit more... Actually, I don't even know, man, because I I, I do know, like, a, a, I mean, I th would say like eighty percent of my clients and music videos are black. Do you know and how many? I will say uh, not a lot of them. A lot of them are scared of Freemasonry, yeah. but there's a lot of Prince Hall lodges, which is yeah. uh, black lodges yeah, in Freemasonry. They don't know Prince Hall. And also, I don't. I in my research, I've also known that blacks can join join a regular Freemason lodge, but also whites can also join a Prince Hall Mason lodge, Correct. which are as a black lodge, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, I won't get too much into, into the history of the Prince Hall Lodge, but uh, these are my respected, beloved brothers of the African-American community who've been with us as Freemasons since the founding of this country. Right. Yet, most African-American brothers I know don't even know. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. They don't know the role they played in the founding of this country, and they don't know the importance of the mind that they represent through legacy. Through all the brothers that are still in Prince Hall. But going all the way back to the Moors. Yeah, too. all the way it goes all the way back to Egypt. 
Yeah. So when they dance around, say we're kings, but then hate white people. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. yeah. Again, the, the the teachings of masonry teach not of the flesh, but of what's inside the flesh. So once you become raised, you're not no longer a son of man. You're a son of God. And every brother that went through the same raising is your brother. No matter what race, anywhere on the planet, he said the same thing, went through the same ritual. He's you. And to be respected as you. And, of course, when the Freemasons, I mean, when Prince Halls came on, there was a time of, you know, slavery and all that. But that didn't stomp out that light. It didn't keep the African-American brothers from knowing the same brilliant wisdom of the ages. But they don't know today. And then you go on my line, oh, yeah, there's this, and there's the devil, and the Freemasons, and Satanists, and blah, blah, blah. And I go, what the fuck? And then you wonder why they're fucking everybody, why the race and the African American population is struggling to get out of the grip of separation and not knowing their own self, killing at ridiculous rates, drugs, everything that's happening in what you would call inner city, whether Latino, whether African American. You're talking about a segment of society that is lost and has no knowledge of self, but they want to blow right over it. And then anybody that brings in anything that points to that direction is automatically labeled by the press. Racist. Yeah. Racist. Racist. Yeah. You're the follower of the Satan. And all. So then people just keep being asleep. Okay, beautiful. So we're going to get into the next question here, and it's and the next one says, "How early do rituals start when a member has children, aka taking the children to the temple and involving them in said rituals?" <laughs> well, that never happens ever. Okay. That's a fantasy that you would call bullshit. <laughs> There's no ever a time when children or family members are brought to the lodge. Okay. It's all an individual man's situation and it's never happened. So wherever they heard that from, uh no. Are there separate groups for women and children? Yes, we do have a women's organization known as the Eastern Star. There's young young uh children, female, Job's daughters, you know. Kind of like you know, would have in Boy Scouts and different organizations, sure. Uh, that are, you know, there to promote family unity and hopefully, if let's say uh, the Demolays, which is the the youth group of Freemasons, you know, hopefully they come into the craft later on. But okay. yeah, we do. Okay, perfect. So let's go into the next question, and this one states: um, Do Freemasons control local economy, such as new business and? new business and or any other uh, money generating entities are there um, is there an age limit to join the Freemasons what is the main minority of Freemasons that's three questions in one okay uh, I'll try to knock them out as far as Freemasons running any local economy national or local um, I can tell you this that in every business sector in any city or state there is a group of people that are running that economy. Some of those brothers and companies and businesses that are dominant in the world and dominant on the local stage are Freemasons. Okay. But there is no economy run by what we know as Freemasonry as an organization. Freemasons are businessmen and business tycoons and have been forever. So as far as any truth is we run anything, no. No. And then what was the okay. second question? Okay, so the, the the second part of it was, is there an age limit to join Freemasonry? Yes. It varies from lodge and jurisdictions, but it's 21. Uh, but I believe there's some lodges today that are allowing 18, or it used to be. Okay. I'm not really familiar with all the jurisdictions. And okay. then you're talking globally, so I'm not going to speak to that. But it's very easy to find out if that particular lodge or jurisdiction that someone might be interested in you can find the age limit very easily and what is the main minority in Freemasonry? is it mostly black is it mostly white is it mostly jewish okay what is it let's take it again it depends on what part of the world obviously in the philippines the lodges will be dominantly filipino 
<laughs> and then if you go to the United States, if there are big sections and communities of certain particular races, let's say a particular Latino lodge, you will have primarily Latinos in that lodge. Sure. But then if you go to certain parts of the country in certain cities, you will have a cosmopolitan of all races. Yeah, we like don't, we don't we don't what's it called? We don't dictate a race. You can be the only Mexican in a Filipino lodge or the only African American in an all white lodge. It, yeah. it matters not. Yeah, because one of the most iconic uh, Mexican presidents was Benito Juarez, and he yeah. was also a Freemason. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of Mexicans don't know that. Yeah, they want you know, to. Just, just like you know, you were talking about like you know a lot of, um, and I'm not saying a lot of um, African Americans, but there's a, a ton that I've personally have met who are just like terrified of Freemasonry. So, yeah. um, but there's a rich. Um, African American history, yeah, with Freemasonry, it's so they're, beautiful. that they're not even aware of, yeah, I, I, and, I, and also with Mexicans, absolutely. I want to, I want to actually one day get involved in a movie that explores uh, the Prince Hall affiliation with the Underground Railroad. Uh, okay. Harriet Tubman was a Eastern Star. A lot of the 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 Prince Hall Masons that created that pipeline to to canada in those days were freemasons and that's wow. that's how i they didn't did know it. that yes they created it so the though the women in that light in that organization have a real rich untold history uh, i want to hopefully get involved with a filmmaker that wants to bring that to light beautiful I, I'd, I'd love that next question is do the highest members communicate with non-human entities so do the so do the highest freemason members communicate with non-human entities how and for what purpose okay let me answer it this way <clears throat> there are adepts or masters of these secrets and there are souls on the planet that have supernatural ability and can communicate with other dimensions and other spiritual beings not only on this planet but in other dimensions like i said so, so this is real then yes this is real because at the end of the day you're talking about the powers not only of uh, a being that is just self-aware that it's alive you're talking about a being that inhabits a body and then can basically, through mind, dematerialize its body. Okay. You know, the control of the atom, the atomic structure of one's body. There are humans that can be, appear in human form and, like I said, walk through a wall. Because physics will tell you this isn't solid. So it'd be real easy to think, shit, if I can control the physical vibration of every atom of my body, I could go through this wall. Sure. And there are people like that, like people, oh, we gotta have guns and all this shit. And it's funny to me when I, when I think of people trying to defend their flesh with weapons. Oh, it's better to be a warrior in, in the garden and defend it so when they come and attack, I go, dude, yeah, let me tell you something, bro. When they come, they're not coming with bullets. That's a mess. They're coming with shit you can't even imagine. So all your guns and shit ain't gonna mean shit. And then where would your faith, bro, be if you witnessed a being who had a guy, AR-15, aimed at him, shot one round, and miss, but you could see the bullet strike the wall. Then have him shoot again and have the bullet fall right in front of the guy. I'm talking about a, a human being that had the ability to stop a bullet. If you saw it, now I'm not going to tell you if I seen it or I didn't, but if you did, where would your faith in bullets be? Yeah, I mean, I would. They're probably the non-efficient, yeah. right? What yeah. the fuck? You gonna? How are you gonna stop Magneto? You think those? You think the X Men and shit was just a fantasy? You're talking about people that really have that kind of ability and power. So there are people, yeah, absolutely, in this world, in this realm. Who have supernatural power? Supernatural powers, and have been here with us. Are they Freemasons? 
I can't say. I can't okay. tell you. You can't tell. It's us. so okay. above. No, I can tell you this. It's above Freemasonry, meaning they know that plus some. So you have to be a Freemason plus something else. Your soul has to be developed where you're not even existing in this human flesh form. Jesus, man, this is this is getting you're crazy. You're existing in a. Imagine you being graduate to a being after you leave this life to a being that can operate on the fleshly level wherever you need to be whatever you need to be embody that be that disappear all in the promotion of the human soul and humans can do that there are beings that are are shepherding the humanity but humans can develop to be that or no humans can develop to get to the realm where when they leave this earth, they have left and have graduated so that when they get onto the next side, then they can make that choice. Oh. You have to get to the awareness so you can come off the cross. We are Christ on the cross. We have been crucified. It's a lot of guilt, right? A lot yeah. Of guilt. yeah. We have been we have been crucified on the cross of time and space. So this is the world where things are too. So you can't have unity here, but you can remember unity. So when you leave here, you can leave it unified so you don't have to come here again, which is what all traditions eventually teach you. That's why I try to say, to make it real simple, bro, it's all about learning how to die. Okay. When you can look upon the planet and leave the planet with the right mind, not just knowing how to die like I don't die. No, but you look at everybody and you see the great tapestry that brought you to here, to that enlightenment, all the souls that existed, all the wars that brought you, your family, your bloodline to where you could exist and you could remember who the fuck you are. Then you might be able to go to that college where, hey, I want to make civilizations. I want to be, I want to be the Anunnaki. You know, they make reference of these beings that came with all this. Of course. You think primitive man here on this planet to f- figured out, oh, that's a star and that's a planet. Are you kidding me? Somebody had a teacher, you know, they, 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 won, they, have, they look upon the awe and wonder of all these great minds. Pythagoras, Mozart. He's great. Yeah, Mozart was a Freemason. Absolutely. I yes. just really, I just knew. I didn't know Mozart was a Freemason. Yeah, absolutely. The magic. He was flute. a Freemason. Houdini. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Th- there was all kinds of folks. But I have three more questions for mm-hmm. you uh, that were sent in by people. Yeah. This next one says most groups have code of ethics, like gangs won't kill women and children. Do Freemasons have a code of ethics? People. Um, uh, gosh, this is really poorly written, but uh, Freemasons, um, so it is a Freemason judge, can he convict another Freemason? Is this true? And if that's that person that that judge is convicting, um, and he's also a Freemason, but he committed a horrible crime, will he get convicted? Um, can, uh, are there bad Freemasons who can yes, there slip are, through the cracks? Yeah. There are Freemasons that are, are, they've done, you know, some not so positive things throughout the ages and if somebody has a problem with another brother it's just simply brought to the brothers if one brother has offended another if one brother is found out to be let's say sleeping with another brother any of the things that are of moral a moral truth and uh, uh, basically a code of ethics that one writes upon his own heart you know there's no okay you can't do there's no ten commandments of a Freemason okay so at any at any I guess uh, um, any conflict between two brothers is brought to the lodge, and if if the brothers feel that okay, you stole money, and we've heard both sides, uh, you know, we'll we'll put you up for being demitted. But what if they've committed a bad crime? Like, what, like so, what if, like, if, for example, like there's somebody in your lodge who's your brother, but they've committed a horrible crime, and you know they're a fleshly human. They did something horrible. Yeah, they're um, they're automatically out. Okay. Yeah, they're no longer part of the craft. Okay. They, perf- will, they will officially, if he's a actual registered thirty uh, uh, third degree master mason, he would definitely be out. Like if somebody committed murder or rape, and the brotherhood, the brothers found out that you know it's all public news, of course. Okay. It, once it's official. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the next one is um it says ask them about what they are told to do if someone betrays the lodge. 
Okay. Yeah, and, everybody, and, that's, and that's the final question. Yeah, okay. The penalties, uh, you can find them online. They're real easy to find. There's people that have posted the stuff online and things. I'm not going to get definite on the wording, but you know things like having your heart cut and your throat cut from ear to ear and your bowels removed and burned and whatnot. Is that real? Is that uh, true? Th- these these words and phrases uh, have been with the craft and are part of the craft since time immemorial. And it's to instill on the pilgrim of this path to enlightenment to not tread lightly on the wisdom that is being given to you. You're being entrusted with the secrets of the universe and the secret of the soul. And it, le- it allows the brother that is taking these oaths and pledges, it's allowing him his free will to agree that if he divulges, then he agrees to the penalty, which demonstrates that he believes that these things that are being given to him are sacred to the point where I deserve. If I, of my own free will and accord, say that I won't divulge any of these secrets, then I will agree to have my throat cut from ear to ear. You are asked to allow that to be. Nothing is forced upon you. Everything is of your own free will. So you're proclaiming that you love and can be entrusted with these secrets. And this pledge of having this horrific shit done to you is your proof. That's what that is. It's serious. It's a serious fucking thing. It's not to be taken as a joke. You know, you're not joining the Lions Club or the Rotaries. You're walking with the brothers of the sun, the sun at midnight. So those vows and those oaths are taken because of that. And yes, those penalties look horrible. But no, if you get stupid and put, you know, you want to be those idiots who put shit online. And t- what, what's going to stop us? But that doesn't make a mason. Oh, you know this. You don't know the secret behind it. You don't know the narrative behind it. Why? You know what I mean? Everybody can find everything online nowadays. Sure. Yeah. So, well, Rudy, I, I want to thank you um, very much for being so can- candid. Thank you. Honest and open and vulnerable with your um, your past stories and struggles and 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 um, what a journey. And it just it's been a beautiful journey, right? So thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. If everybody out there yeah if there's anything else you would like to know and you'd like to have rudy reappear on his podcast please let us know in the comments below absolutely thank you very much have a blessed day you too perfect we did it bro we did it, we did it. oh shit bro that was so cool honestly bro that was like better than i could have ever been that was really like so, ago? yeah that was great i think it was great i thought it was cool. I think we hit on it. I think it was like everything. It was like all the questions. Yeah. It was like you like hit really hard on like the stories and like your life and everything. Uh, this is gonna be great. It's gonna be like a two hour long podcast. Yeah. Let's see how long this audio is. Right. It says it is two hours and fifteen minutes. It's probably gonna be like an hour and forty minutes for sure.